Well, Paddy, welcome to Fred Fest. Thank good, you very much. Good yeah. to have you along. Yeah, thank you. It's good to be here. Yeah, it's a bit of a different year, but it's, uh, yeah. it's good yeah, to it's be back in the one. flesh. Yeah, it is. It's nice, finally. So, for, without giving away any huge plot lines, give me uh, about an outline about what Followers is about. Sure. It's a found footage film um, about a disgraced reality star um, who finds himself uh, in the middle of a paranormal happening at a university campus. Uh -huh. I think that's about as quickly and accurately as you can sum it up. Um, I think it very much borders on the line between comedy and horror. Mm -hmm. um, and I think it's one of those that you never can quite predict where it's going, which is why I like about it. Okay, that's good. Um, how do, how do you were involved in writing the script. Yes. Yeah. How did that come about? Uh, well, Marcus, it was his, uh, Marcus the director, it was his you know, baby from the beginning. He, uh, he actually started writing the script as a kind of homage to Cabin in the Woods, which we're both really big fans of, mm -hmm. as kind of uh, something that tries to subvert all the horror stereotypes and uh, plays on the fact of the, you know, let's split up and all mm. this by outside influences. Um, and so when Marcus started writing this, it started that way. But then the characters themselves became so interesting that it just completely turned into something else entirely. Mm -hmm. um, but the thing that stayed was the idea of being constantly watched uh, and always having, you know, whether it's uh, followers, hence the name of the film, watching you or just outside influences in general, maybe darker, more sinister things. Mm -hmm. um, then that's kind of where that whole Cabin in the Woods viewing experience came from. Mm -hmm. um, so when I came on board, we slowly kind of formed it towards that area. And uh, it just kind of developed and developed and developed. And our editor, Will, when it was finished, took all the different pieces we'd kind of put together and rearranged and reordered. And the different drafts of this film has been through. It's become a different film each time it's been edited. And it's been really interesting to see how it's been made. Yeah. Yeah. So, and, and obviously, acting as you're saying, but mm -hmm. what's the attraction of script writing? Well, I, I also love script writing. I'm doing a bunch of stuff myself right now. So it's, I think the attraction of script writing is well, one, creative control. Mm -hmm. um, I love being able to create a world and kind of create different characters. And I think what Marcus is very, very good at is finding different characters that will bond when they shouldn't and that will fight when you think they get along. Mm -hmm. And I think throughout this, um, he does that, and we worked on that quite a lot. I think that's always the fun, is finding the conflict within the characters. Mm -hmm. So I think that's probably one of the biggest attractions of screenwriting for me, is uh, creating unnecessary conflict. Unnecessary. <laughs> <laughs> well, isn't that often the point? You know, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that's the point. Um, so there's a bit of a history behind this film, yes. because uh, Marcus is no longer with us. No, he's not, unfortunately. And Am I right in assuming that you had quite a big hand in finishing the film? Yeah, no, um, I, from the second draft to where we ended up at the 10th mm. or 12th edit, um, I gave my opinion every single time pretty much. And um, there were tons of people that helped, you know, Park House were fantastic. We had uh, Mox's wife, Anne, gave so much feedback. Our editor, Will Honeyball, our DOP, Alan, everyone who was involved in the filmmaking mm wanted to see this out. Marcus, you know, saw this as his legacy in a way. Mm -hmm. um, and he had ideas for a second, then even a third. And so unfortunately that might not happen now um, with him gone because I think it's it's his project. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, I, I had a hand in, in trying to make sure that his vision was kind of carried out as he wanted. Oh, good. Mm -hmm. good. Tell me a bit about the cast. So the cast, we had uh, me as John T. We have um, Larice as Zorna, um, and she's fantastic. She's been in Black Mirror, and she's um, she's going to be big. Uh -huh. I know that for a fact. She's an unbelievable actress with an amazing quality of stillness, which is just so important. Erin, uh, who's like our scream queen, uh -huh. um, and she's also I mean, she's a proper scouse girl. <laughs> um, we have Dan, uh, who's Pete, our Scotsman, and uh, he's, I suppose, the line between psychopath and uh, comedy in the film. Mm -hmm. um, and I think what's really nice about all those, who, oh, and of course, you know, Nita Wadia, who plays Becky, and uh, we had tons of Tony Burr, Ryan Lee, we had, some, we had an amazing cast and everyone got along so well. We all lived together actually while we shot it, because we shot it over a course of 14 days, and all the main cast lived in the university accommodation that mm -hmm. we shot on. Um, 
And because of that, we all, well, found footage. We had 15 cameras. Oh, Christ. Um, yeah, I, yeah, it was a nightmare. But it was amazing because we got to use them all in the evenings and we became the closest of friends mm -hmm. and shot tons of footage on our own. And some of it's ended up in the movie. Uh -huh. um, and I think that, that was what was so, so amazing, the line between reality and you know, movie making got yeah, really got blurred. blurred yeah, yeah. Um, and all these amazing actors who came in and, and did their own stuff, you know, they improvised, they created new mm -hmm. things. And some of it's in the film, some of it's not. And I say it would be like 10 hour blooper reel if we can have it, which is just <laughs> oh, fantastic. Oh, almost for the, for the DVD. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> and where did you shoot it? We shot in Twickenham at uh, St Mary's University. Ah, um, just round the corner from me. Yeah, oh, where are you? Yeah, I live in Twickenham. Yeah. Oh, very nice. Yeah. yeah. Well, I'm, I'm in America now, but... Oh, where about? Uh, Los Angeles. Yeah. yeah. Flash. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, Flash. I've, yeah. Never, I've never been there. It's, it's good and bad. I mean, I think you go there yourself, you see what I mean? There's beautiful beaches, beautiful skies, and then just... Oh, just other things which I probably shouldn't say on camera. No, no, no don't, don't cut it out, honestly. Okay, don't cut it out, yeah, all right. Uh, so uh, what's next for you? Um, for me, I, like I said, I'm doing a lot of script writing yeah. right now. Um, so I'm um, writing a 10 episode, one hour an episode series. Mm -hmm. uh, and I've been pitching that out and I've got a writing team behind me. And so hopefully that should be coming out the next, I'm hoping a year and a half or so. Good. Um, I'm not sure how much about that I'm allowed to share right now. Um, and then I have one or two different film things, which again, I'm not allowed to share right now. So nothing that exciting. Nothing that exciting. <laughs> just a day job. Yeah, just a, just, just a day job. I'm a tyler in the evening. Oh, you know, my mother always says, get a trade, son, and then you will be fine. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you very it's much. Great to have you along. Thank you. And I'm looking forward to doing the Q&A later on. Yeah, absolutely.